Good evening, everybody, and good morning. Morning, UC. So, um, Grant, how are you, man? Looking good, good at the show. Looking good at the show, man. Yeah. How's Cisco Live? Pretty good, pretty good. So, um, let's maybe let's get the housekeeping out of the way first, and uh, and let UC finish his breakfast. It's very very early in Finland. Okay, so everyone's going to be in listen-only mode. So if you've got any, um, any questions or any chat, um, we've got the chat function down the bottom there. Uh, we've already got some people saying good morning, which is great. Um, a couple of regulars on there. Um, if you do have any questions throughout the webinar, uh, the Q&A is really, really good for that um, because we can up and down vote uh, the, the, the better questions. Um, we're going to have Dom uh, he's going to moderate the questions as well. So uh, if we've got anything in there that we can, uh, we can quickly answer, um, Dom's gonna be the guy for that. Um, otherwise we will escalate them uh, to myself or UC. And- uh, Asian, that sounds very serious, man. Oh yeah. Yeah, so, that's that. Yeah, so I mean, I guess to, today's webinar is really, uh, it's going to be approximately an hour um, of UC eating breakfast. No, I'm just kidding. So, um, <clears throat> so we are um, the APAC team, the Akahau APAC team. We're uh, we're currently at Cisco Live, so we're on the show floor. We've got uh, Anthony in the background there, um, and we've got a couple of slides that we're going to run through. We've got Dom uh, up in the corner over there, <laughs> um, and we're we're going to have a bit of fun with this one. So, you know, the intention was to keep this light but we're going to run through a couple of slides and then we're going to do a review um, of the, uh, the show floor. So I, I did a bit of a walk before uh, and we're gonna have a look at conference Wi-Fi. So let's, uh, let's kick things off. Right. Do a quick screen share and we'll bring this up. All right, so. Okay. Do you want to mute, Tom? All right. Yep, all right, we're all good. Okay. So we've got a couple of surprises in here. So we're gonna replace Anthony with UC today. I love that, I love that. Um, that shot of you, you see, but it's just so cool. We're going to give you a pair of sunnies as well because you know it's only, it's only appropriate, right? I hate you too, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I, let's, um... I'm not sure where this is going, man, but yeah. <laughs> So just so everyone's aware, UC hasn't seen the slides that I've uh, that I've put together. So we'll um we'll keep him on his toes. All right, so the APAC team are here. Um, we've got a couple of our distributors and resellers also on the booth. We'll take, uh, we'll show you a couple of screenshots, uh, some photos from the booth. Hopefully you've been following us on Twitter and LinkedIn as well, um, which we've been promoting. Um, I'm Grant Shelley, so I'm the technical sales engineer for Asia Pacific. Um, we've also got on the booth, um, Anthony, who now looks like you see. Uh, we've got Amin, who's our channel sales manager. And unfortunately we couldn't get Shigeru down from Japan, but um, I'm sure he's on the webinar watching intently. So really, really quick uh, agenda. So, you know, we're gonna talk about uh, from Cisco Live and we're gonna focus on conference design. So, you know, there's a lot of deployment challenges there. Um, obviously high density. I'm sure UC's got a couple of, uh, uh, a couple of little, you know, sidewinders to throw in there. And then, you know, we're gonna do a bit of a live demo. So we're gonna actually look at um, what we captured on the show floor, have a bit of a, a review of that. Uh, and then obviously along the way, uh, please interact via the Q&A um, or the chat. Hey, speaking of Sidewinders. Um, yeah. Can we talk about something like what's going on in the Wi-Fi world? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll give you a hint, Grant, and you haven't seen my stuff either. First, it was these guys, like nine months ago. And now, these guys, <laughs> just this week. What am I talking about? I'm, I'm going to cover the logo so that, you know, it's hard for you to see what I'm talking about. Yeah, do, do you want me to, uh, you want to screen share, UC, or you want me to keep going? 
Or is, um, that, is, is that one of your sidewinders? No, this is this is the sidewinder. Like, like uh, okay. it came out like these guys nine months ago, and and the audience. Maybe maybe we'll ask the audience in the chat. These yeah, guys yeah. months ago. I'm gonna cover the logo. These guys just this week. What am I talking about? And and I think we should really quickly touch this because it, it's a big topic for me. And these are like two of my my like uh, favorite companies as well uh, in the industry. I have many, but these are two two of the many. So so uh, anybody know uh, what this is about? I'm sure you can see my video. These guys. I, what happened this week? I I can't right now. But um, oh, you can't. No. Sorry. Sorry, man. So so um, it would have been cool. But it's not. Hang on, hang oh. on. I'm, I'm, I can see a video off Dom's screen. We do, I don't have enough screens. <laughs> I can't operate with less than three screens here. That's, that's my problem. Oh, okay. I'm, yeah. Okay, I gotcha. I gotcha. So, so, so what I'm talking about is, um, is Juniper acquiring Mist systems. And what I was referring to for earlier was, um, was like nine months ago or something, uh, K was acquired by Aruba. So, so a couple of interesting... Uh, Moves and I think the Juniper misting just happened this week. So uh, I was yeah. just going to ask, like, any thoughts on on that? Yeah, that's a um, that, that that's a good question. So um, so we're we're opening that up to the audience to see if they've got any got any thoughts or you know if they if they're popping anything into the chat. I did see there was a lot of chatter on Twitter about that uh, that about that particular acquisition. Um, that seemed to be my timeline for the day, more or less. But uh, we, we and we did see some guerrilla marketing by Mist. They uh, they had some pop up advertising uh, out the front of Cisco Live, just as people were walking into the convention center. So very well played. But no no Juniper advertising um, on the uh, so obviously too 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 soon at the moment. So it looks like everyone's pretty quiet on the chat at the moment. You're on mute, you see. Oh yeah. So sorry about that. So so just um yeah, just just curious about like um because Mist was one of those like really young the the youngest uh Wi-Fi startup that I know or, or youngest Wi-Fi infrastructure vendor, cool AI based stuff, some cool location, BLE array things here and there, and then all of a sudden like uh, acquired by Mist. We did see the, uh, like, I'm sure people saw the acquisition coming, but not necessarily that it's going to be a Juniper. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to say curious, interesting thing. Congratulations to the entire Mist team, Bob Friday, Wes Purvis, Rob Boardman, everybody there. So, sorry to hijack that. I just like current events. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, you know, and it's um, you know, it's it's particularly relevant for Asia Pacific as well. You know, Mist had a you know had a, a loyal following and a strong following here as well. So, um, oh yeah, you know, I think think a bit of a bit of a shock um, that it that, that it came, um, but I think the anticipation was there as well. Um, but yeah, not not uh, not expecting it to come from Juniper, I guess. Um, yeah, and it's just like. Um... I've been really positively surprised by the quality of their products, the out of box experience, the story, and then they just employ really smart, nice people. And, and just happy to see that, you know, good things happen to good people with nice culture in the company and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So I'm going to skip through these slides because, um, if you've sat on a webinar before, you've seen these slides. Uh, the most important part about this slide is uh, is me. Yeah, your picture, man, and and yeah. like the you may uh, look at that. Can we can we like read it really slowly, bullet by bullet, like word by word, if if you if you could, or you want me to read it and just <laughs> add some like uh, superlatives here and there. The, I I often say the most important part about this slide is my last bullet point about me loving coffee. Uh, and Dom yes. can attest to the fact that I've had about four coffees in the past two hours. So that's <laughs> why I'm, uh, I'm actually not sitting at the moment. I'm floating. <laughs> I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. <laughs> so 
this is us at uh, at Cisco Live, um, and you know we've we've had some really good uh, some really good uh, interactions with um, with customers and and partners and you know d different resellers and lots of really positive discussions. You know we've been showing off some some pretty cool bits and pieces that I'm sure you know um, what I'm talking about, and we've got the um, we've got the, the the Cisco Live class of uh, 2019. So that was us last night before we before we made off. We were probably the last ones uh, out of the conference. So um, you know, so we've we've pretty much been run off our feet the entire time. So it's been really good. Um, if anyone is jumping on the webinar and they're um, and they're at Cisco Live. Um, come by uh, booth 58 and, um, and come and say hi. Yeah, I have a question on that slide. Are you flexing your bicep or is that like the normal state your bicep is, is in? Uh, I, I actually, so yesterday I got up at 5 a.m. and went for a run. You see, as you know, I, I, I like it. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, yeah, so it. Uh, I, I appreciate you pointing out that I do not do that. Uh, th <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, as, as we have many times discussed, I do not run, you do. You look like, you know, um, <laughs> you and I look like I do. So, so, you know, there's a correlation there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, All right, cool. I wonder if we will ever hit any, any actual content in this webinar. Yeah, yeah. How how are we going for uh, chat and questions, Dom? Has everyone fallen asleep yet, or are they are uh, they they keeping nothing too far yet? All right, pretty good. All right, so let let's have a quick chat about um, about conference design. So I I anything you want to sort of start with, you see about around conference design. Like what do you, what would you define as as conference design? I, I wrote a few notes. Uh, uh, you want me to share a couple of slides just to kick things off regarding like low density Wi Fi, high density Wi Fi. Yeah, then, I think that would be good. I think that would be good. So, um, let, okay. how about let, let me, um, yeah, you, um, ah, the classic. Yeah, man. Uh, many of you may have seen this, so we'll just go through this quickly. But um, just to illustrate, like, uh, all Wi-Fi is not created equal, and the reason it works at your home uh, is because there's, you know, small number of APs, small number of clients, and not a lot of that IoT stuff going on. Uh, you know, whether they are uh, Bluetooth, Zigbee, video cameras, uh, whatever automation systems. And um, think of Wi-Fi kind of like, kind of like a bar, uh, and th that's actually Grant. It does look, he does look like kind of like you, Grant, doesn't it? Mr. Stock photo. Yeah, not uh, too bad. Not too bad. Yeah, yeah. It's one of your worst days when this was, this was taken. Clearly, you did not go for for that five a.m. run that this, morning. Uh, this was me before I worked at Eckerhau. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You were still smiling. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I got uh, I got sick of the bow ties, so now you know no bow tie. Uh, any, anyway, so, so while the goal of the um, well, think of think of um. Wi-Fi as a bar, so just like in a bar, you have a bartender, but customers uh, with Wi-Fi, you have APs and client devices. And whereas the bartender's job is to get, you know, wine from the bottle, whereas Wi-Fi's job is to, you know, transfer ones and zeros um, in case of download from the, from the uh, AP to the client device. And, and here's the dilemma. Here's uh, what usually works. So this is definitely not Cisco Live. This is definitely not Mobile World Congress or Super Bowl, all of which were created using Echo's tools. Uh, but but uh, so this is low density Wi-Fi. This is Wi-Fi at your home. It's not high capacity, and it's what we call grant piece of cake, right? Uh, and this is where the dilemma is in conference venues. Even in hospitals, schools, there's a lot of APs, a lot of thirsty client devices, and just you know high demand for data. I mean, clients sitting idle in the network, that's okay, but really thirsty clients, uh, you, you know, that's where, where uh, you know the difficulties begin. And just where did you, just uh, where did you get that photo from? That that looks like a photo from last night. It does. Is that is that you again, right there in the middle? Yeah, that that's my thirsty face. 
That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, you look slightly worn down <laughs> after, after it. it was a long day. You were right. That, so uh, were, that looks like a 2.4 B, B client just yelling. So they did yeah, to... yeah, it does, it does at maximum, you know, 11 <laughs> yeah. megs per second. But he's, yeah. he's more like one meg right now. <laughs> <laughs> and that does look like a 2.4 environment in general, like lots of noise and, uh, and not a lot of substance uh, <laughs> being transferred there. Uh, high amount of, of overhead, I would say, Ton, tons of overhead as well. And uh, yeah, just to scope things out from the typical Ekaha webinars, uh, wired Ethernet uh, is, is usually, you know, we don't touch this too much, of, but having that said, like nothing is more important than backhaul. Um, I was just in a conference center a few days ago, and, you know, the Wi-Fi wasn't perfect, but it worked. The RF was fine. But what, what was there, uh, what we found in the, in the back closet was a micro tick. All, all, all good and well. I mean, micro tick products are great, but maybe for, you know, a, a huge conference venue, the micro tick router uh, just couldn't deal with all the load in that network. So, so, so you know, uh, switching, routing, backhaul, all of that's super important as well. However, uh, usually we scope that out from the, uh, from the ECHO equation uh, when talking about RF design, RF planning, uh, that kind of stuff. And just a couple of ground rules quickly. So when you're entering the network authenticated associating, so when you're entering the bar or when you're ordering a drink, if you're at the sofa, low signal strength, go close to the bartender, get high signal strength, get those high MCSs going, uh, show your ID, so authenticate obviously to the network. And uh, how do you like your clients uh, grant in identity venues? Uh, authenticated, like let's say idle clients, you want them authenticated or, or probing? <laughs> we want them authenticated. Um, we're also, yeah. we're getting a couple of uh, reports of the audio being a bit robotic on your end. You see? Oh, oh yeah. I do. I do that's your, um, it started when you were talking about MCS rates as well, funnily enough. <laughs> Sorry about that. Is it still yeah. ongoing? It's, uh, it's pretty good now. Yeah, it was, it was sort of going in and out a bit before. Yeah. Okay. It might be because I'm changing the slides and, um, and the webinar system like, you know, it has to upload a lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's de definitely not your, uh, not, definitely not your Wi-Fi. <laughs> of course it's not, because it's awesome. Mist, now Juniper, Wi-Fi, monitored by eight networks, Aruba sensors. It is, it really is. Uh, so, so here's the deal, and this is, I'm sure, what that will come back to a lot today. But how Wi-Fi works, this is fundamentally important, right? Uh, what do you think, Grant, like, uh, out of Wi-Fi engineers that you meet, how many actually realize this fact, like how Wi-Fi works and how only one client talks on one channel. Because I think this is one of the most underappreciated facts in Wi-Fi. Yeah, we, um, I mean, what I see in Asia Pacific is that, that there's a lot of transition from uh, engineers previously in routing and switching, or maybe mm -hmm. still in routing and switching, um, really smart guys, and they're being lumped with the Wi-Fi piece and they don't necessarily understand, um, you know, the that that sort of you know, one bartender to one customer type of approach that you're that you're describing here. Uh, and because of that, there's a bit of a misconception about just let's just go for generalized coverage, for example, where you know if we've got a higher density, that that's where it's going to uh, that's where it's going to start to fall apart. Exactly, and I think. Keith Parsons and his team of Eka House certified trainers um, does a really, really good job at explaining not just this, but how the contention system mechanism works. And they call it the game. And they actually make the students play the game uh, during the uh, ECSC or Eka House certified survey engineer uh, four day training. Uh, so, so it kind of like it's a really good way of understanding the fundamentals of Wi-Fi uh, and 802.11 protocol first, and then uh, getting to the meat and bones of good Wi-Fi and design and troubleshooting and, and all that stuff. Shameless plug, actually. Uh, Google Echo How Training and uh, take 
that four day Ekahau training course. We have them in Singapore and Australia and everywhere. And it's just the most awesome thing. The guys, well, you've met some of the trainers, Grant, right? Uh, and you hang, hang out with them because, you know, you hang out with yeah. the cool kids and me. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what do you think of the trainers and the course and, and all that? Yeah, very, very high standard. You know, Keith keeps a very high standard of trainer. Uh, the feedback that we've had out of APAC has always been very positive. We actually just had our first uh, sold out ECSE in Bangalore, India. A really, really positive feedback there as well. So, you know, we're, we're looking to run another one later in the year already. So, um, yeah, you know, wherever we run the ECSC, it's always super, super popular. Yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, you know, you get to also hang out with a trainer who is guaranteed to be a white, not just, you, you know, a really knowledgeable guy, but super entertaining, a Wi-Fi rock star. So it's, it's, uh, it's just really, really nice. Uh, should we talk about the importance of data rates in relation to one client at a time? I was, uh, I was looking at the GIF and thinking we were going to talk about beer, but we can talk about high data rates as well, because that, that is just as important. So, so, so um, are you an IPA or a lager guy? <laughs> Bit of both. Yeah, yeah. As long as it's beer. You did yeah. promise that you would have a beer at the booth, but uh, clearly, you, you know, uh, Anthony failed to deliver your beer. Yeah, I, I don't think they're serving yet. They, they, know that, um, they know that we're running the webinar. See, we, that's how much of an impact we have on Cisco Live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, it's, it's, you, you know, well, one could think of it as a surprise, but, but you know, that's, that's how you roll, right? Uh, so, so anyway, uh, like one client at a time, but the, the time here is, is really important. So, so how big of a chunk of time the client takes is dependent on, uh, on the data rate of the client. So, Grant, data rate equals to signal strength, right? It, it just... 100% correlates to signal strength, uh, high signal strength, high data rate, or does it? What, what affects the data rate besides signal strength? Obviously, you, the higher the signal strength, the higher the SN, or the, uh, the data rate, but what else? Uh, what can reduce your uh, data rate? Uh, we've, we, well, we, we've got another number of factors that we can do. Uh, let's, let's look at the, well, We'll talk about that when we get to the uh, when we get to the survey file because that'll be I think that'll be a bit uh -huh. of an eye opener. So I've, I've right. already ha I've had a sneak peek. Excellent. I, Excellent. I, I cheated a little bit. <laughs> I just I just wanted to add, add a picture of you here. Uh, you to the right. Um, this is uh, you know last night. I'm, 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 is that me yes. on the left? That's me on the yeah, left, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's, then that's fine. Yeah, and then yeah. the next morning on the right. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and that's me at the bottom of, of the center picture. I don't know how to fight. I was a grown up in, uh, first of all, I'm a week, and secondly, I was a grown up in Australia. Uh, so I never learned how to fight. <laughs> anyway, so just to recap, uh, why is Grant unhappy at the end of the bar? Anyone in the chat board? Or anyone in the chat board? Question mark. Yeah, let's engage some of the attendees. What are the what do the people in the chat? There's a couple of people in here, mostly yeah. complaining, complaining complaining about the audio. <laughs> so they're definitely oh. listening. <laughs> Sorry about that. So so Grant, why, why is why were you unhappy at the time of uh, this photograph being taken? Ah, uh, here we go. Someone's jumping in. <laughs> so someone's saying that um, the guy can't associate to the bartender. <laughs> That's, uh, <laughs> That's uh, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not. not getting the attention of the bartender as well as the beautiful peer. Wow. Well, so we're getting creative now. This is um precisely, good. precisely. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe it is a combination of both. <laughs> it probably is. So, so the beautiful bit here, exactly. So, so uh, the people close to the bartenders are enjoying high data rates. Then these nasty people here are causing a lot of that noise uh, 
you know, reducing the SNR, because SNR is a key component of data rate, let's face it. Uh, you, you know, uh, even if signal strength is low, but if the noise level increases, the client device will start downshifting the data rates uh, until it finds a high enough SNR, until it finds a suitable connection, a reliable connection. Uh, so, so signal strength and and noise are both important, as Grant the man will uh, show very quickly in his demo. So, in short, this guy just has low signal strength uh, because he has to shout all the way to the bartender and a uh, very low SNR. Enough of me and my choppy audio of your screen, Grant. I hope this serves as like kind of an introductory uh, thing. Just uh, leave this in here as you switch your screens. So Grant, off to you, sir. Yeah, okay. Let me, uh, let me share, let's get back to this share. Okay, so you should be able to see my screen there. Let me just shift this, okay. So here, here is it, and and that that was some some really good explanations, um, and you know that that sort of talks about that high density that we're going to be dealing with in an environment like this. You've probably seen in the background. There's a lot of people going back and forth, um, and when we look at the survey file, we're going to pick up some bits and pieces. So a couple of points that I put together for characteristics of conference design, or uh, conference Wi-Fi design. So temporary. Right, so you know, usually very quick installation, um, probably a cabling nightmare. You know, we've got uh, we've got a picture on the screen there. You know, you can just see the cable just sort of dangling there, um, and that's being put together pretty quickly with cable ties and and a quick mount um, with some directional antennas. But it's probably only going to be there for a couple of days, and then it's going to get taken down and it's going to be uh, it's going to be gone. Uh, So the other thing that we've got is big open areas. So, you know, particularly, um, you know, the, the main world of solutions that we're in at the moment, a lot of big wide open areas. You know, we've got some booths and things like that. You know, you can see the booths behind me, but they are very, very thin. Um, and, and a lot of the time there's access points actually mounted to, uh, at the top of the booths uh, with, with, you know, directional antennas. Um, but, you know, big wide open areas. So, you know, we're going to look at a couple of bits and pieces. Hey. Perfect time for coffee time, you see. Um, but big wide open areas, so there can be a lot of a challenge because you know we're not going to get you know some natural attenuation that we may get uh, if we had like a uh, you know, like a building type scenario where we could uh, we've got multiple small rooms that we could place an access point in a room um, and naturally attenuate that uh, that signal. Um, existing Wi-Fi, so um, that's a picture of the ceiling that's literally right right above me right now. Um, and there's a lot of Xerus um, access points. I'm pretty sure we've picked up some, uh, some Meraki APs as well um, that are probably uh, just outside of this conference area that are being used like for point of sale equipment and things like that. So, you know, we've got um, the convention center's own Wi-Fi. We've got the point of sale Wi-Fi. And then we've also got the temporary Cisco Live Wi-Fi as well. So we've got almost three enterprise grade networks all in the same space that are all going to be contending for that um, for that airtime for that spectrum. All right. So, what do you think, you see? Time time for a demo. But absolutely, absolutely. My my uh, favorite character. I do apologize for the noise coming from the coffee machine. <laughs> but um, yeah, time time for a uh, time for a demo. And I mean, you know the. Dude, are, are it's, you referring it's to my the, the likeliness there, right? You, you're not referring to my accent here, are you? <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But if I, I do recall when you were in Australia, there was a there was a few Hans Gruber shots um, as we were boarding some flights. <laughs> true that. True that, cowboy. Yeah. Now we <laughs> have a machine gun. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, so let me uh, let me bring this back.
we'll quit out of PowerPoint because we don't need that anymore. And we'll bring up probably what everyone's looking forward to is the survey. So any questions so far? We've had a couple of people in the chat with some, uh, with some good responses to, to UC's deck. But uh, any, any questions? Dom's shaking his head, saying, not yet. All right, give me a second here and I'll... So how's the network at, uh, at Cisco Live? Uh, at least, you know, I was at Mobile World Congress last week in Barcelona. Somewhere like north of 100,000 people in the conference and the network was just rock solid. I, like, can you imagine wow. the work that goes into it? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've seen um, a, a lot of access points. We're, we're gonna have a look at the, at the ones that I picked up that were Cisco specific APs. Um, but the network has been really, really good. Full disclosure, I'm on a wide connection um, just in case. And what's Dom showing me? Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. But we, we can have a look at this. Um, and let's do a uh, let's do a screen share. Okay. So can you see my screen? All right, cool. So this is this is the the survey path that I did look at those straight lines. I'm I'm very proud of those straight lines. So the the first thing that jumps out to me um, with this survey is the number of access points that we were able to pick up, right? So, you know, 169 APs um, across the entire floor. Uh, and if we, maybe if we separate these out a little bit. So let's just put the, let's put the, uh, the Cisco Live APs on the map. So now we can see on the left-hand panel, we've got 39 Cisco Live APs in, in the survey area. How does that how does that sound to you, you see? Not bad. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Yeah. So let's have a let's have a quick look at everyone everyone likes. And Oh, what is going on? I'm misclicking all over the place. Let's have a look at signal strength. So this is just for the Cisco Live APs. And we're just going to look at the five gig network at the moment. <clears throat> Looks pretty good. So are we are we finished now? We like we've got we've got coverage, right, Dom? We we we're done. We're finished, right? Let's jump over or to are you, Grant. Are you? Okay. <laughs> let's uh okay, so let's have a look at two point four. Just let's just compare. Oh man. It's not so good. But I I would I would think that that is probably very deliberate, All right? So Cisco would likely have designed um, the network this way because they're trying to get a lot more devices onto the five gig network rather than the 2.4. You know, we've got a lot more available channels on five gig, so potentially a lot more bandwidth um, rather than 2.4. Maybe we'll have a couple of 2.4 only devices. So, you know, we've got some connectivity, but really we're trying to push as many devices as we possibly can to the, to the five gig band. What do you think? Do you think that's probably the, um, the thought process there?
All right. And so what if we looked at, rather than just the Cisco Live APs, what, what about if we looked at the, the other access points? So, you know, we picked up 39 Cisco Live APs. We've got 130 like rogue APs, like, you know, non-Cisco non Live APs. So let's have a look at, let's have a look at that. Oof. So it looks like um, it looks like Hulk Green to me, and I wonder. And I mean, look the so the the, the first um, the first hotspot is it is an Android AP. Whoops, if I can uh, if I can spell. So we've got nine Android APs. I'm sure we've got a you know we've got some iPhones, but uh, have we also got? And there's the Xerus access points that we showed the picture of before, right? So <laughs> we've still got the Xerus access points are active while the conference is going on as well by the looks of it, right? So maybe let's, um, let's just tick these guys. Oh, hey, there we go. Cheers. <laughs> nice, man. Nice, you yeah. finally got the beer. Oh, and you're drinking in synchronization. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. So, so let let's have a look at just the Xerus, um, the Xerus access points, right? So this is probably an easier way to do it. So nothing on two point four. Let's switch back over to five, and uh, not too bad actually. It does look like the Xerus access points are disabled here. But if we look at, so we've got, we've got the little, you know, um, up and down arrows, which is indicating the entry points to the world of solutions. I would guess that that is probably signal bleeding through from the, um, from the doorway more so than anything else. So that's actually, that's actually pretty good. That's actually pretty good. Still a fair bit of bleed though, right? You know, if we look at the signal statistic there, <clears throat> It's still going to, you know, cause cause uh, a bit of an issue, but not too bad. Now, the the other report that I had was was Meraki. So yeah, we've got um, we've got some Meraki access points popping around. Yeah, but it's like. Uh, even Meraki has full coverage uh, as well. So maybe that's like a failover redundancy network because that's what I think I heard yeah. at the Cisco booth had at MWC. They had a primary network of mm. Cisco and then uh, a failover redundant. Yeah, it could Meraki. be. Could be. Yeah, I can see where we're just looking at it on the screen here. We we did look at this, but we didn't look at it in this much detail. So this is sort of you know this is the this is the type of analysis work that an engineer would be doing um, with a with a survey file, right? So we're sort of looking and going peeling back the layers to see, okay, well you know what what were we able to find um, during the survey component? But that that that's a really interesting um, input there. But they all look like to be different SSIDs as well, right? Ah, okay, then that's definitely not the case. Yeah, so it's a bit of an odd one, but I'm pretty sure the, um, the you know, the default network here is, um, like the point of sale is, is Meraki. So, you know, but, you know, that may be something to flag as, you know, as, as something that needs to be investigated further as well. So, sure. <clears throat> what else, uh, what else do you think we should look at? Hey, we, um, I have a, I have a, what, what was it? Sidewinder for you. Yeah. Yeah. Can I steal the screen for a second and I'll show you something and uh, we can play like what's different or odd in, uh, in this project file. Cause I did the same at the uh, Cisco booth at MWC last week. I, uh, I was surveying there with, uh, with a couple of friends, Amina and Jim Florwick uh, and uh, you know, interesting results popped up. Any yeah. chance I, I could share my screen as well. And, and yeah, go for it. So here we go. You probably are able to see it, right? Yep. 
So first of all, you find anything curious about the user interface here of the pool? Hey, what's that new color that you've got there? Is that yeah. aqua? That looks really nice. It's Aquaman. It is indeed aqua. So, so you mean you mean this color here, right? Yeah, and that um, that scaling looks really nice too. Yeah, yeah, really, really nice scaling. Yeah, so so this indeed is the upcoming version uh, ten for those of you who you you know on and um, and our existing users like uh, this is the upcoming Ekahop Pro ten. So I was using just the standard Psychic and the Ekahop Pro ten to survey the Cisco booth. Because um, you, you know those guys told that they have a lot of AX 802.11 AX gear at the booth, uh, so so this is this is what we found. What do you think? That is pretty cool. So that's a that's a live survey that you've done. Yes, absolutely. Ekahow ten capturing AX access points. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's pretty cool. Uh, okay. Yeah, we've had um, we we've had some interest in uh, in AX, but uh, that's uh, you know good to see that it's uh, you know we've got surveys out in the wild. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, one one thing to talk about it, but a whole another to to be actually surveying it and all that. And as we know, like the difference between AC and AX is that. AX actually is both bands, right? Uh, so AC never extended to 2.4, but AX is both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. And we can see that there is some AC APs here as well, uh, but most of them certainly are, uh, yeah. are AX. So I believe here the scenario was Meraki as a failover redundancy network and then Cisco 9000 series for the actual production. Right, okay. And you can get a glimpse of the new access point list here as, as well, like a bit streamlined, a bit smoother. The, the new user interface just looks a little bit sleeker all, all the way. And there's, there's a lot of improvements and, and feature addition coming to the product as well. But we can talk about those later. For those of you who have valid support contracts, of course, this will be a free of charge update anyway but it's it's looking cool it's looking very like the i'm excited because the product is getting there it's it's very much uh, you know ready uh, and uh, you know we'll be launching it within the next couple of months yeah we've uh, we've given a couple of um customers some some demos of the new stuff and they've been blown away um that the speed particularly in uh, in 10 um is, is is really apparent you know a lot of the underlying code just seems to be yeah it's it's impressive um yeah I mean, you can see the scaling there right like that is that's very very fast yeah i don't know if it transfers over uh, too well uh, it looks good it's it's just a solid product we have to like rewrite half of the code base of the product literally uh, to get here to modernize the whole thing to make it smoother make it better uh, you, you know I um, I can't wait to read the release notes. It maybe it'll look like the um, I think the release notes will be similar to the uh to the new CWNA book, right? It'll be like this big thick <laughs> of all of all the updates <laughs> and improvements. Yeah, man. It will be as thick, and and uh, for sure we'll try to put some humor in there as well. You know, our, our product guys like to have fun with the release notes. <laughs> you probably know. Uh, and, and you will be demoing this at the Cisco Lab uh, this week as well. Like if somebody goes there and asks for version 10 demo, you'll sure show it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're showing version 10 and, you know, the other, the other bits and pieces that, um, you know, that intersect in with version 10 that, you know, we, we won't mention, but people that know will, yeah, they're, they're, they're getting pretty excited about that. That's so cool, man. Yeah, that's that's all I wanted to show is just a, you know a sneak peek of the uh, upcoming version. Thanks yeah. for giving the opportunity, man. No, that's that's really cool. That's really cool. All right, so we, we've got about fifteen minutes left. Um, should we take a look at? Because I mean, you know, the I, I think the coolest thing with with doing a survey 
in an environment like this is just looking at, okay, what did we capture on the spectrum? What did, what did that raw RF energy look like, right? Um, I would summarize it in a word as angry because <laughs> there's lots of red. <laughs> so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take back the screen and... You don't have a sidekick connected right now, do you? Or, or at hand that you could connect just to show uh, also the live uh, capture of sidekick for those, you know, not everybody may have, may have seen yeah. it, but it's mind blowing the, the speed of the sidekick, the accuracy, just like, you know, this is from the spectrum uh, right there, right? Live. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're looking at right now. And I mean, we just, I just saw the spikes, Dom's pointing at them as well. Yeah, there was a couple of spikes that, um, and you can see them populating, you know, throughout. Um, and, you know, we can bring up the radios so you know, we can search by radio as well. And so all of this is happening in real time, but when we're doing a survey, we're actually capturing and we're mapping this. So, you know, we can play this back, um, you know, and, uh, and effectively, you know, pinpoint where the, uh, where the particular issues were occurring as well. And I mean, just looking at this right now, I mean, look at the overlap that we're getting, right? You know, and we, we've already, you know, we can pick out, you know, we've got an access point on, on uh, well, it may not even be an access point. Usually um, the devices that are jumping on odd channels are often like, um, uh, you know, hotspots and things like that. Um, Secnet, um, you know, I, IBM. So, we, you know, we've got iPhones as well. So there's a lot um, sort of happening. So that whole one, six and 11 isn't, uh, sadly isn't in effect here. But the cool thing is that, I mean, we're, we're, so we're looking at that on 2.4, but we're also, we're doing the exact same thing on five gig. What do you think about channel 100? It doesn't look too crash hot at the moment, right? I wonder if that's- yes, he Super heavily utilized yeah. at least. Uh, my guess is you guys are associated to that. And since you're streaming video, uh, all the time. Yeah. I'm going to blame Dom for that one. <laughs> Can you zoom in on, on channel 100? Yeah, let's have a look. So look at that. So we can zoom right in. <clears throat> yeah. And that's and uh, got, 20 we're at, hertz AP. Yeah. Seems so like. we're at, uh, we're at 60% utilization. Um, wow. So that's, uh, I mean, that's, that's almost getting maxed out. At the moment. That's just, to say like uh, how the client devices are all, always not very smart at, you know, balancing the, the load between the AP. So the client, if the client devices were really smart, they would make an educated decision of like the spectrum is utilized on this channel that provides the strongest RSSI. Let me hop onto the next uh, strongest AP because clearly there is one available that provides, you know, good enough MCS, good enough SNR. Uh, but it's, it seems like most of the clients still, they just are stubborn and, and want to associate to the uh, strongest, you know, the AP providing the strongest signal and probably the, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the, it's the biggest problem that the clients have always got a mind of their own in a lot of ways because each manufacturer will do it differently. And, you know, it's getting better. There's, um, you know, there's some good, um, you know, enterprise guidelines that Apple have put out and, you know, a lot of vendors are starting to do that, but understanding how the client chooses, um, you know, its association um, is uh, a lot of the time, it's sort of a bit of a guarded secret. Yeah. And I know, for example, Apple and Cisco have put on, and, and obviously Aruba and those guys, they are putting more and more work into this and, and uh, you know, the client device manufacturers and the AP vendors are cooperating more and more to combat this issue. And of course the standards bodies as well. So it's, the situation is getting better, but it's clearly we can see we're not there yet. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, when we look at uh, how many APs have we got there that are, um, <laughs> that have defaulted to uh, 36 at 80 megahertz, which says to me a, um, you know, an, an out of the box type of, um, you know, setup. 
So if we if we talk about the you know the 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 bar analogy before, we've got you know we've got five or six access points that are all fighting each other within that same airspace, um, you know, which is exactly uh, it's it's, it's like uh, mess. cramming like cramming seven bartenders within one one square meter area doesn't really you know help with the capacity, right? They they will end up just fighting with one another. Yeah. Yeah, you need no, exactly. to spread the bartenders uh, across, you know, the entire uh, bar counter to to provide you know increased capacity with all those added uh, bartenders. Otherwise, it's going to be a mess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, so so what we're looking at, like, I mean, this is all real time. Let's have a look at what what was captured during the survey, right? So we've got live, we've got survey. So if we click over to survey. We've got, we have a look here. We've got my little circle point on the map, which is basically saying, right, this is where you were at that point in time. I've, I've mapped um, my, my position on the floor plan and kind of like a YouTube video, right? I can just sort of scroll through and replay in effect what was happening at a particular point. And I can flick over to five gig and I can do the same kind of thing here as well. So it does make the pinpointing a little bit easier effectively to replay, but I probably wouldn't, wouldn't do that to start with. What I would really be looking at is, you know, particularly if we were looking at, um, I don't know, like let's have a look at spectrum utilization because that's going to bring up some highlights for areas to investigate, right? How are we going for questions, Dom? Everyone's pretty quiet. UC sounds very robotic. I do not understand what you mean by robot, like a robot now. voice. <laughs> <laughs> so let's jump over to five. So what we can see from here is, you know, there's a, the, the utilization um, down in this section onto the, to the, the top left um, looks a little bit higher than normal. If I hover the mouse over there, I get a tool tip, which is sort of saying, okay, 60, 70%. I might want to have a look at that. So if I bring up the, the spectrum view, And break that out. Oh, that looks pretty high. <laughs> right. And then we can. It's still, it's still Wi Fi, right? So, so uh, this is a good yeah. example of like, even if it's high spectrum utilization, it mm. can actually mean that the network is, is working uh, as it's supposed to. And I yeah. mean, what more can the, can the Wi Fi designer do than, you know, provide good signal across a lot of channels? Uh, yeah. Of course, like, it would be nice to have the load balancing between channels work ideally, but that those are like, uh, each vendor, Wi-Fi vendor does it differently and cause it's not something that, you know, uh, the client devices and uh, APs can do in a standard spaced way. It's just a tough problem to solve, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, that, that just looks like, you know, a high, high transmission, you know, someone's doing a, a stream or, you know, high, high bandwidth usage more so than anything else. Hey, uh, for those those that you know hang hang on this long, can we show one more thing about spectrum? Uh, can I share my screen real quickly? Yeah, if, yeah. Uh, just want to share. Uh, and and now those those still at the webinar should go go to their friends and go like, yeah, I was showing all this cool stuff at their webinar. You guys missed it. You totally missed it. Next time, better be here, man. This only provided live uh, to you guys <laughs> and, and on YouTube a couple of days later. But, but anyway, uh, let me yeah, share. My we, we, we don't tell anyone that, right? Exactly. So this is version 10 and uh, a survey that I did just with an, with an earlier uh, version of 10. Uh, and, and you can see, you know, there's, there's APs, there's coverage, uh, all that fun stuff. Um, however, What's kind of, kind of interesting about this one is these guys here. So as you mentioned, like during the survey, you may find some oddities and version 10 uh, can actually 
detect and locate some of the most common, not all, but some of the most common uh, interferers if they seem to be like, uh, if the amplitude and duty cycle is strong enough to be may perhaps hurting hurting and causing an impact to your network. So you can see these, and these are not poop emojis, these are actually triangles. If we zoom in, we can see that, yeah, they are actually triangles. So there's, there's uh, stuff like video cameras and, and things like that uh, on the map. You can I thought see there were, um, I thought there were speed signs telling you to, to slow down. You're surveying too fast. Yeah, it kind of kind of looks like that. I uh, I I would agree, but uh, take my word for it. They are just triangles, not speed signs, not poop emojis. Let me take out. Uh, but that's pretty out. handy, right? Because yeah, now yeah. now it's saying it's flagging, basically saying, hey, there's a spectrum interferer here. This is the band. You probably need to take a look at this. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, if you take the interferer uh, heat map, a new thing in version 10, obviously, uh, we can actually click on the interferer and see its impact range as well. And then we can do exactly what you showed, like, you know, drill in deeper using the survey inspector. So take the magnifying glass thing and just so, look at, oh, okay, here we go. What does, what does that look like? So, so Dom is just seeing this for the first time and, and his face looked like this. So, um, so <laughs> I, I think all the attendees are probably like that as well, right? You know, they're like, that, that, and that's, this is probably why we're not getting any questions because they're just, they're, they're in shock. They're, um, they're <laughs> it's that or it's a beer clock already in, uh, in Australia. Possibly. But this is the time. This is the kind of Aussie awesomeness that, that you know, Grant and, and the guys will be providing in the future webinars as well, right? Just a little sneak peeks uh, of future products and then uh, get fired by the product management uh, because, you know, showing too much too early. This is why I got you um, to, to, to hop on today. So we could, because, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to get fired for showing the new stuff, but, uh, I, yeah, I think you're safe. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see about that. So... If you don't see me in future webinars, so you know what happened. <laughs> Please hire me. Hire me. <laughs> I need a job. Anyway, thanks for uh, you know letting me show this. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Well, look, we're um we're almost up, time wise. So um, I guess uh, look, any any last minute questions? Um, otherwise, we might we might wrap this up. I think it's been pretty good. So we've got, uh, so one person has said really impressed. So we, we've impressed one person on the webinar. Uh, and so I, I think that's mission accomplished. It is. Yeah. It, it really is. Yeah. Uh, Grant, if you could like, uh, let's see how impressed you can make them with your biceps. Uh, <laughs> it's here. Just I'm, a uh, little I'm, I'm wearing long sleeves, mate. It, it doesn't, uh, doesn't, doesn't translate. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Somebody said, can we start crowdfunding for better internet access for you? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag uh, internet for you. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can get a, um, a hashtag internet for UC trending on Twitter. And um, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that, that's pretty good. <clears throat> that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, um, Thanks for hopping on, UC. I, um, you know, I appreciate you getting on so early, dragging well, you out of bed. Truth be, truth be told, it wasn't that early. It was like this was eight thirty my time, so we can easily do an hour, uh, hour before. And you've uh, you've frozen now, UC. So um, we we are well and truly going to have to crowdfund your internet. Oh, you there? You there? Hey. I'm here. <laughs> that was my frozen frozen face. All right, Anthony's got a beer for you. So, um, so next time, beers are on us. Thanks, guys, for uh, right. letting me stay on. No, that I was really, really, really good. All right. Well, thanks everyone for uh, for attending. We'll be uh, we'll be putting this on the on the YouTube page in the next couple of days. Uh, so yeah, you'll you'll get an email out. Um, if you 
know anyone that might benefit from having a look at this, um, you know, please send it, send it forward. Um, and yeah, we'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Thank, thanks so much, uh, Grant. Thanks so much, Don, a Anthony, uh, everybody. And thank you, Hanale, uh, for setting the whole thing up. Uh, hashtag yeah, block. Hanale, Hanale um, working the midnight hours to get these webinars, our crazy webinar schedule um, done for us. So we'll, we'll try exactly. and slow down now. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys. Cool. Talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.